This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we talk shooting anamorphic. Mystery out of the effects, techniques, going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. So, why did all that footage look a little bit different, more interesting, and a lot cooler, you might think? It's because I shot it using different anamorphic lenses and filters, which makes everything look a whole lot more awesome. And this topic is something that's been requested since the very beginning of the show, so it is definitely overdue. <laughs> Now before we dive in, I want to talk about what anamorphic is, which is basically true widescreen. Most of us, and even some Hollywood films, will get this widescreen by just cropping the top and bottom of their image like so. What an anamorphic lens does instead is to stretch the image while shooting so it looks like this. Then in post-production, you're going to correct this by unsqueezing the image and you will have true widescreen with every precious pixel put to good use. This form of shooting has been used in films like Indiana Jones, Die Hard, Alien, Blade Runner, well, most of Ridley Scott's films and pretty much all of Christopher Nolan's films as well. The technique was actually invented during World War I to provide a wider view for military tanks, then converted for motion picture cameras in like the 20s. But it didn't get heavy use until 20th Century Fox bought the rights so that it could create its own technique called Cinemascope, which they did to try to lure people back to the theaters since TV was getting so popular. And now you know what it is and where it comes from, so let's get into it. I recently reached out to the good people over at VidAtlantic. They make a filter that emulates the look of the anamorphic lens called the Cinemorph filter, so I wanted to get my hands on one of these to show you guys and as it turns out they are some awesome people who went above and beyond the call of duty they hooked us up with the filter and let us borrow a few of their lenses to test out and show you guys as well these babies we have the iceco ultra star the sancor 16c the panasonic 16.9 conversion lens and of course their cinemorph filters now most of these type lenses are actually intended for projectors but have become very popular with the dslr crowd so what you will do is you'll take the projector lens and connect it using a lens clamp to your camera lens just by screwing it on like so. Now, you will need to do some tweaking to make sure that the lens is right side up, which you can do by pointing it into a flashlight, then spinning the lens until the light is going horizontally across the screen. Now with it all set up, you're ready to shoot, which in camera will look like this, all stretched out, but I had no problem framing my shots at all. You can see exactly what the shot is gonna be like in the end. Of course, there are EVFs, and monitors that will correct this stretched image, but even if you don't have that, it's really no problem. In fact, the only issue I encountered using these lenses were vignetting and focus. With focus, you actually have to pull from both lenses, which at first was a pain, but after a while I got pretty used to it. For the most part, when I was focusing on things closer to me, I just had to turn the projector lens all the way to one side, then focus with my camera lens, and when things were farther, I just rotated to the opposite side, and once again, focus with my camera lens, pretty simple. Now the vignetting I would say is the biggest issue. To avoid it, you have to use longer focal length lenses 
lenses and since I'm on a full frame camera, I had to go 85 millimeters and up. But even with 85 millimeter, I still had some vignetting issues, especially when the light was bouncing around inside the projector's lens. Now, I actually like some of this vignetting, even though it is a downside. If you understand it, you can actually utilize it for style. But that general idea kind of encompasses these lenses in a nutshell. They have tons of small little quirks and issues to keep in mind and work around, like getting soft in certain apertures or not being able to go too wide or even to telephoto with your lens choice. But if you understand the pitfalls, you can use them to your advantage and come up with some very, very interesting stuff. Which again, this technique in general really renders a much more cinematic look, which is due to the fact that you are shooting stretch, then bringing it in your editor like so, and either stretching or squeezing your image back to normal. I decided to squeeze by dropping the vertical scale. Now, how much you drop depends on what lens you're using. For info on that, you can actually just download this anamorphic shooter's guide right here. It has all the numbers there and can walk you through it. So now, since the image would stretch, then squash back down, we get these really great cinematic flares and a much more cinematic look to the bokeh as well, which bokeh is just referring to the aesthetic quality of the blur in your image, which with these anamorphic lens on, you can see that it has kind of a stretched look to it. And since we're used to seeing big Hollywood films with this, it does a lot to make the image feel far more filmic and far less video-ish. So for those of you who often ask how to get a more cinematic look, this is something that definitely delivers the emotion of a Hollywood film. Now I'm gonna take a quick break, then we're going to compare footage with and without the anamorphic look and a filter that makes getting the look 10 times easier and cheaper. Domain.com is a place to go if you're looking to get yourself a domain name or web hosting, whatever it is that you're looking to do from hosting a blog, promoting yourself on the web, Domain.com is by far the best place to go. If you want a domain name but you can't decide what you want that to be, Domain's got the discovery system that can hook you up and help you get the right one for you. And just to sweeten the deal, as I've told you a million times, you use that coupon code FILMRIGHT at checkout and you're gonna get 15% off your domain name and web hosting. So if you're looking to build yourself a presence on the web, start a business, whatever it is, do it through Domain.com. Logo. Okay, so I showed you these lenses in action, which you can get some of these from vidatlantic.com. They have a few for sale there, and you can even go over to eBay and search through the tons of different options they have there, but these lenses can get pretty expensive and are a lot more high maintenance when it comes to filming as well. And as an answer to that, Vidatlantic came up with this, the Cinemorph filter. You screw this baby onto the front of your lens, make sure it's lined up like so, and you are ready to shoot, which there were actually a few shots using this filter intercut between the shots of the ones using the lenses from that little ditty I showed you before, which you really can't tell which is which. This filter does a great job of emulating that look and getting great flares as well. And one thing I really dig about the filter is the fact that you can manipulate the flares. So for instance, all you have to do is rotate the front of the filter like so to move the flare around in your shot. Have a shaft of light come down or that typical horizontal flare. It seems small, but this is actually one of my favorite things. One downside is that it does not stretch to the image, so it isn't true widescreen. So you will be losing some of your image having to crop the top and bottom. But some of the perks of this filter are the fact that it doesn't make your image soft like some of the lenses do and the vignetting is less of an issue. It can still be an issue depending on what lens you're using but I found it much more manageable. Plus with run and gun shooting, which I do a lot, this filter is far more practical than the lenses are. So there you go. We have the lenses and the filters, which now I would say which is my favorite but honestly I don't have one. Although each lens and filter can basically be used for the same effect. Each is different and has its own style and personality. One feels a little more vintage, one is a little more epic, and so on. I mean, one of the lenses has that very Michael Bay-ish, J.J. Abrams type flair, and the other one has more of a white, westerny type feeling to it. But each delivers a different type of look and flair, so you really have to test them out and see which one you want. And I mean really to give you an idea of what I mean, here's a comparison between each and even some shots that are clean to show you how different they make everything look. <laughs> So there you go, I hope this was helpful. I know the topic can be a little bit confusing, especially since there are so many different options. Now, my guess is for most of you, the best option is going to be the Cinemorph filter, which is definitely an awesome addition to my gear set and much cheaper than the lenses at around $99. And of course, you can get this at vidatlantic.com along with a lot of their other great products. So jump over there 
and check that out. But that's it for today, kids. And since so many people have been asking, yes, I am on Instagram. If you would like to follow me, it's the same as my Twitter, but on Instagram, Ryan underscore con link, which you can find right here. But now I have to go prepare for next week when me and my ghost friends con people out of their money.